Okay, and then let's plug in for this. Okay, so 9 times 10 to the 9 mm -hmm. times um, positive 3 times 7 to the negative 6 mm -hmm. times um, positive 16 times 10 to the negative 6. Good. So it's good that you saw that we have to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find the distance between these two points. So all these R's stand for different distances. This is the distance between 1 and 2, between 1 and 3, and between 2 and 3. And again, this is R, not R squared. So this would be root 29. Good. So over here, we would plug in. square root 53. So how would we find the energy of the whole system? Just add all of these up, making sure to include the correct signs. Okay. Let's go ahead and try to calculate that. You can actually do this whole thing in one step on your calculator. Or you can split it up if you like. Okay. So, uh, except for rounding error, we have the same answer. So about negative 0 0.008. And the units for that are? Um, the units for that are joules. Did this come out positive? I set this up wrong. All right, I wanted this to come out positive, but uh, it didn't. But let's suppose that this had been negative, okay. and this had been negative, and this had been positive. Well, then this would have come out to be positive. Okay. Uh, no, that probably won't work either. 
Well, no, nothing we can do. It would still be. came out negative and there's no easy way to fix that. But just let's suppose that this had actually come out to be, say, positive uh, 0.04 joules on a different problem. All right, if we did a different problem where this came out to be positive 0.04 joules, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that if all of the particles started at infinity, it would take 0.04 joules of work to move them into these positions. And I wanted to talk about this because this is a common way that this is tested where they ask you how much work would it take to move all the particles into a certain position. So if this had come out positive, um, now if this, if this had come out positive, would that mean that the particles preferred to be infinitely separated or they preferred to be close to each other? Separated. Yeah, they preferred to be separated because when they're separated, they have zero energy, right? At infinite separation, U would be zero. Well, that's better than a positive U. Everything wants to lower its energy. So if this had come out positive, that would mean that they don't want to be pushed close to each other, which would mean that we would have to do work to push them close. And how much work would it take? Well, to get from infinity to this configuration would take this amount of work. Okay. So that's the type of problem that you would be likely to see here. Of course, this is only going to come out right again if you're plugging in the signs into these formulas. Don't forget that we're not squaring these r's. One thing that made this a lot easier, this should remind you of the questions that we did in two dimensions with force and field. We also talked about how to deal with the net force and the net field in two dimensions, but this was way easier because when we worked with force and field, we had to break the forces into components before we could add them up, or break the fields into components before we could add them up, and we needed a whole bunch of little triangles to figure that out. But that's why it's so useful that this is a scalar, because this is a scalar, we can just add these up without breaking them into components. Scalars don't have components. All right, so in general, um, let's, uh, if, uh, if you want to find the energy of a system, you have to figure out the energy of each of the, of the pairs. Mm -hmm. So if there, was, uh, if there was a fourth one of these, then you have to figure out the energy for Q1 and Q2, Q1 and Q3, Q1 and Q4, Q2 and Q3, Q2 and Q4, and Q3 and Q4. Well, that would probably be more than you'd have to do on the test because that would take you too long. Yeah. But you have to figure out the energy for all the pairings. Of course, you only have to do it one way. Once you've done one and two, it wouldn't make sense to do two and one because that's, that's the same thing. That would be double counting. So you have to just do each of the possible pairs. So here there was three possible pairs, and then we add those all up. 